everybody, welcome to our first lesson on time signatures and hopefully our only lesson on time signatures. So if you're present and live with me, I just explained there about time signatures and said this will probably be this will probably be our last heavy lesson for the level one uh, sorry level two and level three guys. Those doing level five will have some more. But the level 2 and level 3, this will probably be it in terms of having to sit and write out stuff and get confused. All right? And I promise you, today's lesson won't be too confusing. Certainly last week's, there's a few folk that said it was a bit confusing for them. This week's one you should find a lot easier because we're going to talk about time signatures, what's contained in them and what they're telling us about the tune that we're going to play. And you'd be surprised, it's a lot easier than you think, okay? So, before we dive into the time signatures, we need to try and understand simple and compound values. And we've covered this before. So remember, we spoke about what simple notes are, we spoke about what compound notes are, what they mean, and what they tell us. All right, so remember, we said simple notes or rests are those which can be divided into two other notes or simple notes so it can be split in half we said before so remember we said a crotchet can be split in half and it equals two quavers so therefore it's a simple note oh and as if by magic there it goes so a crotchet split in half equals two quavers and it can also be done for rests so there's a minimum rest split it in half you get two crotchets and if you're thinking, well, how would you split it in half? Again, we just went back to our duration table that we've done at the very, very start, where we had the same review at the very top, and we're splitting it in half and just working our way all the way down to the very bottom note, which was the demi semi quaver. So we had the greatest note, semi brief, shortest note, demi semi quaver. Understanding the duration table makes life so much easier for everything we do. And then we spoke about compound notes, or rests are those that can be divided into three notes. Alright, so it doesn't split in half, it splits into three. And I always said to folk, remember the compound notes are notes that are always dotted. Alright, and you'll see there, there's a dot. Alright, the compound notes are always dotted notes. And it can be split into three. And some of you might think, oh we've done dots before, oh, I forgot what a dot does to a note. Right, a dot just increases a note by half of its original value. So if I cover up the dot, it's the same as the group above. You can split it in half. All right, but the dot is half of what it actually is. So it's a quaver. So it then therefore becomes three quavers. Okay, and if anyone needs, after this, I can do this on the whiteboard as well for you. And again, it's the exact same with rests. Okay, so if you've got a, same as above, a minimum rest, splits into three, because it's got the dot, so there's one, two, three crotchets. Time signatures, there they are. Okay, there's a lot more than that, but these are some of the ones that you'll have seen so far. So some of you will have played the mass band 2-4, you'll have played a 3-4 march, you'll have played a 6-8 march. Okay, I've not called it that because I like those numbers. I've called it that because that's the time signatures that we're playing with. And as it says there, time signatures, the two numbers that appear at the beginning of a tune and immediately after the treble clef. So the treble clef's there. We drew that loads and loads. Straight after that, you've got the two numbers. And there are two main types of time signature. Okay, there are, there are a few more, but the two main types that we're going to deal with are a simple time signature, okay, and that basically tells us that the length of a beat is equivalent to a simple note, alright, so we're dealing with simple notes in a simple time signature. And a compound time signature means that the beat note is equivalent to a compound note. So a simple note, undotted, divisible by two, compound note dotted and divisible by three and it tells us how many beats are in the bar and what the duration of the beat is and you might think what do you mean by duration again it's how long the beat is or how long it lasts and the two 
different types of time signatures do it in different ways and we're going to cover that today and I'm going to try and explain it as in as simple a way as I can and again if we're struggling we'll go back to the whiteboard. So simple time, so remember in simple time the beat note is not dotted, it does not have a dot. Now most sim simple time signatures will either have two, three or four beats per bar. So we've got for example, a 2-4, a 3-4, and a 4-4, four, four. okay, when we deal with simple time, as you can see there. When the top sim number is 2, 3, or 4, the music is in simple time. And you'll probably think, I'm never going to remember that. You will, all right, you'd surprise yourselves, okay? 2-4, 3-4, 4-4. Almost all of us here have played one of every single one of those tunes. 2-4, we've played the mass band 2-4. We played a 3-4, which was our very first 3-4 march. Flam, sims, roll, higgity, diggity, dot, flam, buzz, 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 tap, 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 flam. That's a 3-4 march. And 4-4 four, four is Scott and the Brave. Scott and the Brave is a 4-4 four, four march. So, let's have a look at simple time. And we'll look at this time signature. So it says 2-4. So the top number tells us the number of beats in every bar. All right, so two beats per bar. One, two, one, two, one, two. So there's going to be two beats in every bar. So we're only counting up to two. The bottom number tells us the length of the beat note. And you might think, well, what's four as a length? Well, the four, all right, means quarter note. So again, think back to our duration in the table. Well, the semi-brief, which was the whole note, Split that in half, we had the minimum, which was the half note, split them in half, we had crotchets, which was our quarter notes. Okay, so the four represents the quarter, which tells us that every single beat needs to be a crotchet. So we had one, two. Every one of those beats are going to be a crotchet. Okay, so the value of the beat in this case is a crotchet or a quarter note, as I just explained there. So, and it says, remember, each beat can be subdivided into shorter notes as shown below. So we did speak about subdividing notes. All right, that gives us an example there. So this is what music would look like for us snare drummers. Without the five lines, uh, we would only deal with one line. So let's check every single bar and make sure it adds up to two crotchets. So straight away, the first bar is really obvious because it equals two crotchets because that's all there is. Okay, so we don't really need to think too much about that. There's one, there's two. Easy. The second bar contains two groups of quavers. And for those who have been paying attention to like the notes lessons and subdividing and adding up all the notes, you'll be able to tell straight away how that adds up to two crotchets. So we know straight away, if I look at these first two crotchet quavers, sorry, if I add them up, I get a single crotchet. If I add them up, I get a single crotchet. Okay, so we know just by adding those two individual groups, they're going to equal two crotchets. Okay, and if I go back one, right, notice how there's two groups. There's one group. There's two groups. The next bar, there's one group, two groups. And what I mean by groups is the notes are grouped with the beam underneath. All right. So if it's a crotchet, you can't have a beam. So a crotchet's completely on its own in the beat. So there's one, two. There's your first group. There's your second group. One, two. So notice again, there's always two groups or two beats. Okay. In the third bar, we can see, as I said there, there's two clearly defined groups with your beams there. So there's the first group, there's your second group. The first group contains a quaver there and two semi-quavers here. So if we add the two semi-quavers up together, we get a single quaver. And then when we add that quaver that we just got there to the next quaver, it gives us a crotchet. 
which is the value of the first beat, all right, or number one of our two beats. And the second beat is a crotchet. So again, we can split that crotchet and that crotchet down however we want, all right, whatever we want to play, we can split it down and play what we want to play. But whatever we put in the first group and the second group has to add up to a crotchet. We're not going to play it, because you can see in this group here, all right, we're not going to play a crotchet, we're playing a quaver and two semis. That would be da, 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 da. All right, that's what we want to play. All right, we don't have to just keep playing crotchets, because that would be the most boring drum score in the world. And we don't want to do that. We want to make it fast and exciting and energetic. So we have to split the notes down. Okay. And our last bar... Straight away, we've got just a crotchet, easy peasy. And then in the second group, we've got one, two, three, four semi quavers. All right, so if we add up those two semi quavers, we get a single quaver. Add up these two semi quavers, we get another single quaver. Add those two quavers together, we get a crotchet. So that is our beat notes. All right, that's where our beat notes come from. And we're adding, we're always adding things up to try and make sure that they equal the value of the beat note. And in simple time, uh, two four, as you can see, the beat note has to equal a crotchet. And we've got two of them. And I think we're going to end up playing this rhythm. Yeah, so if we were to play this, all right, and remember I said before, for snare drummers, this is reasonably easy for us to do. For pipers, it's a nightmare. Okay, so to play this, I'm going to count after two and I'm going to clap it out for you. It would be one, two, go. One, two, one, and two, and one, and a two, one, two, e and a. Okay, and I'll use the mouse this time and I'll point at it as I say it. So after two, one, two, it will be one, two, one, and two, and one. And a two, one, two, we and a. All right, so this is where I wish my mouse pointer was like a wee Mickey Mouse head because it would be like the old Disney songs following the bouncing head and singing the song. All right, but we've not got that, unfortunately. Just a big boring pointer. So this is what drumming music would look like for us. However, we wouldn't just play these taps. We would maybe put a flam on that. We'd maybe roll here. We'd maybe go flam. Zap, tap, tap. We could do more rolls, we could do flams, accents. We could change this to instead of all the same hands, we could go right, left, right, right. That becomes a paradiddle. Paradiddle. Two e and a paradiddle. Okay, there's loads we can do with music, but we need to be able to understand it in its most basic form, which is this just notes. All right, before we start playing about with them. So, let's look at the next time signature. It says 3-4. So don't get confused and think, oh, it changes everything. It really doesn't, guys. Okay? It's the exact same as a 2-4, except instead of two beats per bar, we're now doing three. The four's still the same. All right, so the top number tells us it's three beats per bar, and the bottom number's telling us it's crotchets or quarter notes. So it's the exact same idea. All right, so instead of going one, two, one, two, we're gonna to count to three, as you can see in the bot music at the bottom. One, two, three, and then we start again. And again, you'll see three groups. There's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's always three groups. <clears throat> and it's a bar of three, uh, line of three, four. So, Again, we're going to check each bar. So there's group one, two, three. Group one, two, three. Groups one, two, and three. And remember, we're looking at the lines underneath to tell us where the groups are. And there's our last group, one, two, three. And we'll do that again. Group one, two, three. And remember, crotchets can't have beams under them. <coughs> Excuse me. Groups one, group two, group three, group one, group two, group three, and group one, group two, and group three. And I'm thinking, if 
we're probably going to play this one as well. Yes, we are, because we love playing it. So, to count this, it's the exact same as the 2-4, except you're going to count the three groups. So I'm going to count in after two, and I'm going to clap it for you, and then I'll point at it with the mouse. So if you want to, you can join in. So after two, one, two, go. One, two, three, one, and two, and three. One, two, and a three, and one, two, and three. Easy peasy. And you might not feel comfortable tapping it out with your hands or clapping it. If you had a pair of drumsticks, you could play it. Uh, you could potentially just tap it out with your sticks. So we'll do it again. And I'm going to use the mouse to point at the notes this time. So after two, one, two, go. One, two, three. One, and two, and three. One, two, and a three, and one, two, and three. And this is the same. I could change all of these if I wanted to. I could go flam, hickety dickety dock, seven strip roll, flam, flam, flam. I would just need to make rolls and put flams on these notes. And before you know it, you're starting to write an exciting drum score. All right. Again, I could make this uh, two wee yanda. I could make it a paradiddle. I could make it a mummy daddy if I want. Mummy daddy da. Da. I could do mummy daddy seven stroke roll flam. That would sound cool. Mummy daddy seven stroke roll flam. Okay, and you might think, well, I don't know how you would do that. You don't need to know how you would do that yet, but understanding that it's surprisingly easy to do. All right, taking these rhythms and rolling over the beats or rolling over the notes, putting flams on them and accents. That's how we write music. All right, we're taking. As I said before, the music in its most simple form, and we're messing about with it and doing what we want with it. And the last one we'll look at is 4 4. So, again, by now you might be starting to understand what on earth I'm talking about. Instead of counting two threes or two beats or three beats, we're counting four beats. So, again, it's the exact same. Top number is telling us it's four beats per bar, the bottom number tells us it's crotchets. And just because they're the same numbers doesn't mean we change what we're talking about or what we're doing. It stays the exact same. Okay. So, and again, here's an example of 4-4 four, four time. Oh, it's not giving us the groups. I'm going to give you the groups on this one. So we've got one, two, three, four groups. There's group one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the last bar, one, two, three, four. So we're going to tap out this rhythm as well. The only one that might catch you out is because we're used to doing semi quavers with four of them. And this one, you've only got two. Three, A and four. So I'm going to go for it. We'll clap it first or tap it with your sticks. And then I'll use the mouse to point at it. So play what you see. One, two, go. One. Two, three, four, one and two, three, four, and a one and two, three and four, one, two and three, a and four. Okay, there's no repeats at the end or the start, so you would only play that once. And we'll go again and I'll point at it this time. After two, one, two, go, one. Two, three, four, one and two, three, four, and a one and two, three and four, one, two and three, eight and four. And that would be you done. Okay? And again, you can play about with this and do what you want. And you might think, well, that's surprisingly easy to do. See, when you understand. Um, like quite comfortably what all the notes are and what the time signature is telling us it, writing music becomes like writing words in a book or writing a sentence or just writing anything you you write what you feel so like an author might write whatever they want they're feeling like they're dead scary they're going to write a scary book you might be feeling energetic so you write an energetic tune it, it becomes surprisingly easy 
And for those creative buffs amongst you, when you start to understand how this works, then you can write whatever you want. And if it's good, the things that you write, then bring them in. All right, or even if you don't think it's good, once we start writing music, bring it in. All right, and we'll play it. And if it's worth keeping, we'll keep it. And if it's that good, we'll potentially play it in the band. All right, we've played tunes before and drum scores before that pupils have wrote. All right, it's not just the Simon Grant show. If folk write really good stuff, then we'll play it. All right, we'll always have a look at stuff that folk have written. Because it's important to try and stay creative and enjoy our music writing. So, common time. All right, 4-4 four, four is also referred to as common time. So you might see some folks say, well, what's the time signature? And they'll say it's common time. Common time and 4-4 four, four time are the exact same. The same as a tomato and a tomato are the same. Or a potato and a potato. <laughs> they're the exact same all right so don't be confused if somebody says it's common time all right that's it there let's just see all right and you'll see it instead of having the four four there there's a c i'll sometimes use that if i'm playing a four four which is known or some spade tunes right, i'll maybe use a c instead of a four and the only reason I'm doing that is just to not confuse folk. It's because some folk will see my music and be like, it's a 4-4 match, like Scotland the Brave. Alright, which is a marching tune. A 4-4, which is played in spade time, could be like a dance tune. And before you think, it's not the dance like you're here in the club. Alright, it's not that kind of dance. Uh, like Highland dancing. So you know how you've got Highland dancers, um, they dance along to a tune. Normally they would dance to what's called a strispe. That kind of tune. With the beats a lot faster, but it's still four beats. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. But that's sort of idea. Okay. For the beginner levels, you don't really need to know what common time's telling you, but please pay attention to it, okay? Because when you start delving into more advanced sort of time signatures and stuff, if you know what common time is, then you're on a winner. All right, it's the exact same as 4-4. Four, four. So, for now, gonna talk, oh, we're talking about cut common time, actually. I thought we were going straight into compound time, sorry. So, cut common time, you'll see there, it's got the exact same C, but there's a little line in it. All right, it's just splitting it in half. So cut common time would be 2-2. Two, two. All right, and before I click on the next bit, the two at the top number is telling us it's two beats per bar. And instead of it being a four, we've put a two there. And you're like, oh God, what does that mean? All right, think about what the top, the bottom number was telling us. So the four meant quaver they uh, was telling us quarters even which was crotchets the top the the two means it's like a half all right so the half note is minims and is it going to tell us that yeah top number tells us it's two beats per bar bottom number tells us that each beat is a minimum all right so every beat note is going to be a minimum so in snare drum, all reels are written in cut common time. So an example is below. I'm not expecting you to be able to play that. That's an extremely advanced drum score. But it's just giving you a view of what an advanced drum score in 2-2 two -two time would look like. So you've got the cut common there. All right, and some folk will even just write 2-2. Two, two. You can do that if you want, of course. All right, you don't have to use common time or cut common time if you don't want to be fancy pants now we're diving into compound time now please don't let the compound time confuse you too much or if it does confuse you too much what i was meaning there is don't get frustrated okay because when i was in school or when i was learning music reading you guys are way brighter than i was when i was learning this i was fairly chapping all right and it took me 
ages to understand what on earth going on. And I remember thinking, for example, before I go into it, like a 6-8, I was like, well, how can a 6-8 be two beats per bar? And I just didn't get it. And then literally one day it clicked, and it was when I was writing music, like copying out music, which is what we'll start looking at doing potentially next week. We're going to be doing some music writing, which is really cool. Um, when I was doing that, I, it just seemed to make sense. And I was like, well, that's why. I was like, ah, right, okay, I get it. And then once I got that, everything made so much more sense, honestly. So again, the, comp the opposite to simple time. In compound time, the beat notes are dotted. So every note that's a beat note has to be a dotted note in compound time. Not every single note will be a dotted note, but every beat note has to be a beat dotted note. So if we're playing one, two, one, two, every one of those beat notes needs to be dotted, okay? And it splits into three parts. So remember at the very start, we had our dotted crotchet, split it into three, and then we had the dotted crotchet rest, split into three, right? Whenever there's a dot, splits it into three equal parts. So as it says there, a dotted crotchet would divide into three quavers. And these are the compound time signatures we need to know for the levels that all of you guys are dealing with. All right, so this is level two, three, and five. That's in there. So you'll have, most of you will have seen a six, eight before. Go, all right, if you're in the pipe band, you have to know how to play a six, eight match. A lot of you will have never heard of a nine, eight or a 12, eight match. You just won't have heard of them, okay? So we've dealt with two, four, three, four, four, four. They're all simple time signatures. We're now looking at six, eight, nine, eight, 12, eight. They're all compound time signatures. All right, so if the top number is six, nine, or 12, it's gonna be a compound time signature that we're dealing with. So let's start by looking at the six, eight. And again, you're going to say, well, the top number tells us how many beats are there in the bar. All right, you're going to say, well, it's six beats in the bar. The quaver tells us it's every beat note is, a, sorry, the eight tells us every beat note's a quaver. That's what you'll be thinking. But it's a little bit more complicated. All right, but there's a simple formula to help. And this also helped me. All right, because when I think of, thought of compound time, I said, well, everything's split into three. It was all three, 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 three that everyone kept harping on about. All right, so the way I remembered it is I take the top number of any compound time signature and divide it by three, and that's going to give me the amount of beats per bar. All right, so six divided by three is two, and I've gave you the answer there because a lot of folk might not be good at maths, like dividing and multiplying and adding up and things like that. All right, you don't need to be a rocket scientist level mathematician. It's a lot of big words for a Tuesday afternoon. All right, just simple maths we need to be able to do. All right, so six divided by three is two. So I know that there's two beats in every bar of, uh, what's it called, six, eight match. All right, so it says there, therefore, there are two beats in the bar. Six divided by three is two. And then a nine eight, six, uh, nine divided by three is three. And then a 12 eight, there's four beats per bar. 12 divided by three is four. And I, I, I remembered it that way, but I also remembered that in simple time, we had a two, four, three, four, four, four. All right, and in compound time, we've got the exact same equivalence. All right, two four was two beats per bar. Six eight, there's two beats per bar. Three four, there was three beats per bar. And a nine eight, it's three beats per bar. And then a four four, it's four beats per bar. And 12 eight, it's four beats per bar as well. So I remembered it that way. All right, so it was almost like the same amount of beats. Well, it's the exact, it's exactly that, the exact same amount of beats. I remembered it that way. And I tried to get comfortable with remembering how many beats were in each bar for each of those time signatures. And the more I'd done it, 
the more comfortable it became and therefore the easier it became. And just to let you know, my bairns, kids are just about home so you are going to hear a beep beep <laughs> and it's um, my house alarm letting us know if folk have came into the house. So we'll carry on. So to find out the value of the beat note there's also a simple formula. You divide the bottom number by two. Okay, so you could divide the bottom number of every one of them by two or split it in half. So eight divided by two is four. And the four is telling us the same as it did with the two, four, march, three, four, four, four. The number four is telling us that every beat is a crotchet. So eight divided by two equals four. So the four tells us it's a crotchet. And remember what I said before, that all the beat notes in compound time need to be dotted notes. So the beat note of all of those time signatures is a dotted crotchet. So let's look at the 6-8 and we'll explain that a wee bit more. And again, as I said before, after this I'll get the whiteboard out and we'll maybe draw it on the whiteboard and explain it a little bit more in person. It might make it easier too. So, another way to look at it, all right, and this is a way that one of my friends who was learning how to read and write music done it. He found it so much easier doing it this way. All right, it's taking the time signature completely on face value. So it's telling us six apes. So they drew one, two, three, four, five, six quavers there. And they took the six quavers and divided it into two beats. Okay, or two groups. One, two, there. So there's two groups. All right, and there's three quavers in each beat. And you know that if you add two quavers together, it gives you a crotchet. And then the third quaver is the equivalent of the dot. Because it's half of the crotchet. And you ended up with this, a dotted crotchet. Now, again, I can explain this on the whiteboard for you after, if you need. Um, certainly, knowing this, along with the, what do you call it, the other way of just type multiplying and dividing if you can understand both of these vaguely then you're going to have a strong understanding of what the time signatures are telling us all right so compound time all right we've got the nine eight so this is the exact same idea one two three four five six seven eight nine nine quavers per bar and we know like we just said before like we're well, nine eight it's three beats per bar so we're going to divide it into three beats, one, two, three, or three groups, because we're mega, mega good at music reading. And then when you add these groups up to a single beat note, that is your beat notes there, three dotted crotchets. And it'll be the exact same for the final time signature, which is 12 eight. We'll count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Divided into four beats, because we said earlier about um, dividing the top number by three. Gives you four. So there's three, four beats or four groups. 1, 2, 3, 4. With three quavers per beat. Added them up into single notes, you get one, two, three, four dotted crotchets. So a 12 eight has got four dotted crotchets per bar, or four beats per bar, okay? And we spoke about duple, triple, and the kinds and types of time last week, but here's a little reminder, all right? So when a time signature's got two beats per bar, it's duple time. If it's got three beats per bar, it's triple time. If it's got four beats per bar, it's quadruple time. Okay, so some folk might say, well, go play me a simple duple time signature. I'm like, well, why don't you just tell me to play a two, four and stop confusing me? All right, because if it's simple time, the beat note's gonna be split in half. And if it's duple time, you know it's two beats per bar, so it can only be a two, four. Three beats per bar, 
If it's a 3-4, it would be simple triple time. And if it's a 4-4, four, four, you've guessed it, it's going to be simple quadruple time. Okay? And remember said we said before, also known as common time. So you might see some folk say, if it's four beats per bar, it's common time. Yeah, it's a 4-4. Four, four. It can be 4-4 four, four or common time. And then the last one, um, still, still again, two beats per bar. It's simple duple time. And then... On the bottom one, we've done 2-2 two, two instead of 2-4. All right, because we sometimes play tunes with the beat note as a minimum. And it was also known as cut common time, like you said earlier. All right, common time, cut in half instead of 4-4, four, 2-2. Four, two, two. And let's look at the compound ones. All right, the exact same. All right, so if it's two beats per bar, in compound time, it's going to be compound duple time. So instead of simple duple time, we're saying compound duple time. If it's three beats per bar, it's compound triple time. Four beats per bar, compound quadruple time. Okay, so if it's two beats, three beats, four beats, duple, triple, quadruple, and you're just deciding whether it's simple time or compound time. And again, you might be getting a bit confused, but all we're doing is piecing all these little bits together. All right, so we've had um, simple time, we've had compound time, we've talked about beats, we've talked about adding everything up. All these little bits of knowledge that we're building up, it's all going to add up together to make a strong understanding of what we're talking about. All right, and again, the more we look at things like this in slow time like we are just now, the more it will make sense. All right, and again, when we start writing music either on your own, all right, because the first stage of writing music is just getting used to copy out music. You'll literally copy music and we'll talk about what's in each bar. We'll talk about how it all adds up. And before you know it, honestly, it all starts to make complete sense to you. Okay. So please don't be getting stressed out and getting too confused like the poor lassie in this picture who's about to do a twirl. Right? Don't be getting too confused and stressed out about it. Okay, because the good thing is, as I say, I've recorded this. This will get put up on the Google Classroom. I'll also put it on the YouTube channel. I've also made a video where I'm explaining time signatures in person. You might find that a lot easier. So if you think, I would rather watch that, then watch that as well. And then, of course, please don't be shy in asking me for any help. All right, if I'm teaching you, all right, if I'm, one of you, if I'm your drumming teacher in school, and folk listening will be like, well, of course you are. But there's folk that watch these videos all over the world um, that might not get taught by me. Um, if, if you're taught by me in school, then give me a shout and say, can you explain this to me a little more? All right, I've got absolutely no dramas with helping folk out with bits they're struggling with. All right, that's what I'm there for. That's my job. I'm there to teach you and help you understand everything we're dealing with. Um, I was asked by somebody today in school, when will we be tested? Again, don't panic. I will only put you forward for the test and the examination when you're ready. All right, if, if it's a bit of a 50-50 where we're like, I think he or she's maybe ready, I'm not sure, then we won't put you forward. All right, we'll just wait until you're ready. And it's not like secondary school exams where there's a set date, like say, oh, they have to be done by May. No, we do them when we're ready. All right, so if it turns out you're not quite ready to do it, and say this school year then we'll just wait all right we'll do it when you're ready so please don't stress um granted i want to try and get everyone through the qualifications that you're aiming for this school year that's the aim all right the older kids we're going to get you through them uh, the level fives i want to get them through done before you start getting right into your school exams all right i think that's a great idea uh, those who are in primary school and the lower levels or lower years at school, we can take our time a little bit more, but we'll not drag our feet, I would say. We'll still push ourselves and get through it. 
So for those who are live in the video call, please don't go. All right, we're going to get the whiteboard out and I'll explain some bits and bobs. And if you're watching this video online, then I hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to our next lesson. And I'll see you all then.